Yep. So mm -hmm. uh, I'll um, I'll start with a brief introduction here. So thank you all for coming to this uh, uh, first of the spring quarter uh, applied PD seminar. Um, this is uh, you know we're in a situation where we can continue having the seminar uh, as we did before. Um, so uh, that's that's a good thing, and of course we hope that soon uh, you know everybody will be back to going to re regular seminars as well. Um, our uh, speaker today is Professor Alexei Ripkin, who is uh, currently at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Um, he uh, got his education uh, at Leningrad State University in uh, the former Soviet Union. Uh, I'm assuming, I'm, I'm actually guessing that that university has also a different name right now. Um, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then uh, after a few years in uh, academics at, uh, um, in the Soviet Union and Russia, uh, he's come to Alaska at the uh, premier university in Alaska, University of Alaska Fairbanks, uh, where he has been uh, the enthusiastic advisor of very many undergraduates, uh, often through an RU program, uh, but also master's students. And uh, today he'll tell us about uh, Henkel operators and how they can be used to, um, you know, extend uh, the cases in which we can uh, uh, do something about the initial value problem for the uh, KDB equation. Thank you, Alexei. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you for this uh, introduction and thank you for inviting me to uh, to, uh, to speak. And it's uh, I love this topic. <laughs> and uh, uh, but uh, no, uh, as always, uh, you know, we start with introducing the main uh, object uh, uh, of the talk, which is the KDV equation, and uh, uh, written in standard, quite standard form. Uh, so the uh, the choice of sign here is 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 taken uh, so that solitons are negative. And uh, uh, so, and consider the initial value problem for the KDV equation. And uh, as you know, uh, this is a very famous equation uh, which governs uh, solitons. And it was uh, derived uh, over 100 years ago in 1895 by uh, uh, Dutch mathematicians uh, Kurt Weck and De Vries. And, uh, and then, uh, even though they had did some groundbreaking work uh, uh, for KDV equation, but it was uh, dormant for uh, for many decades until uh, around uh, 50s, early 50s, when three famous physicists, Fermi, Ulam, and Pasta, uh, rederived it uh, for uh, in the discrete case to to describe some process in plasma physics. And uh, and what the uh, uh, and by the way they uh, conduct one of the, the first computer ex experiment, uh, experiment, which uh, e uh, yielded uh, strange things. And it's when it uh, this equation got in the focus uh, of mathematicians. And in uh, 1967, finally, uh, the method uh, which we now call inverse scattering transform was. Uh, was invented by uh, four mathematicians, Gardner, Green, uh, Krusko, and, and Miura, and which, uh, of course, it gave rise to what we call now soliton theory. And as you uh, know, uh, inverse scattering transform uh, conceptually uh, similar to Fourier transform. Uh, and uh, it, it means that there are three steps uh, involved. Um, uh, uh, direct transform. Um, uh, what we do, we associate with the initial data, uh, uh, the full line Schrodinger uh, operator, and um, and then uh, uh, do uh, 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 scattering or perhaps spectral uh, problem and find uh, the, the the data, either sc uh, scattering or spectral, and then. Uh, find its time evolution uh, with respect uh, time evolution and uh, which is governed by a simple um, ODE, um, uh, which in most of cases can be explicitly uh, solved. And this way you get uh, time evolved uh, uh, scattering or perhaps spectral data. And then 
uh, you do the inverse uh, uh, transform um, and finding uh, the potential which corresponds to time evolved data and uh, that potential solves uh, the KDV equation. Uh, so, and, uh, um, and uh, as, uh, as is well known, this machinery runs extremely smoothly and e efficiently uh, when Q is decaying, and then we have in your scattering transform, or when uh, Q is periodic, and then we have in inverse spectral transform. Uh, um, and uh, mm, I would say, you know, within a decade uh, since uh, since 1967, uh, um, uh, a lot of results uh, we obtained the new uh, uh, completely integrable systems uh, we invented, uh, we uh, uncovered, I would say, and. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, tremendous amount of information was uh, learned about uh, KDV and simul and I other integrable systems. Uh, you all know uh, the richness of literature on, on the subject. Um, and uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Kurt Beck and De Vries, Kurt Beck and De Vries uh, uh, knew about the solitone and conoidal weight solutions. Uh, even back in 1985, uh, but no one uh, gave it them back then. Uh, that's why uh, even uh, the accomplishments uh, were not listed in uh, uh, court work uh, obituary when he died in, in the 40s, I think. And, uh, uh, and uh, one would uh, uh, reasonably ask, what is not, uh, still not uh, known after more than 50 years. And it depends, of course, whom you ask. Uh, but uh, some would uh, argue that uh, that a lot, if not uh, everything, is known for uh, classical, uh, that is, decaying or periodic uh, initial profiles. Uh, but uh, surprisingly enough, not much otherwise. And that is uh, 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 why uh, Zaharov, Vladimir Zaharov, one of the founding fathers of uh, soliton theory, uh, asks, uh, in spite of, and I give an exact quote from one of his papers, uh, in spite of all these brilliant achievements, the theory of KDV equation is not yet developed to the level which uh, would satisfy a pragmatic physicist. Uh, what happen, happens if the initial data of KDV uh, is just bounded function. And can we extend uh, the inverse scattering ten, the transform to this case, case which uh, has great uh, practical importance? Uh, so this, uh, this kind of question, uh, uh, and similar questions we asked uh, by some other leading uh, experts in the area and, uh, and uh, it, and I'm, uh, I've been trying to answer, uh, to shed some light on what's going to happen if uh, we leave uh, the classical conditions. And a lot uh, has uh, changes once we leave uh, those classes. And uh, a few, uh, a, a few highlights. Uh, uh, first of all, the uh, if Q here uh, is not short range or periodic, th uh, then there is no scattering theory. Or if Q is not, uh, 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 so there is no scattering theory if uh, Q is not short range or periodic. And it's not because people didn't get to develop it, but because uh, if it runs into difficult questions. And uh, standard data, um, uh, either short range or periodic, uh, no, longer, no longer data. And uh, one would think that maybe scattering, uh, not scattering, but spectral, inverse spectral 
spectral problem would work in this case. It's much more flexible uh, as far as conditions uh, on the potential are concerned. Uh, but in this case, uh, lag spare no longer provides nice uh, time evolution of the uh, uh, spectral data. And, uh, um, and of course, inverse scattering theory is not uh, developed outside of standard uh, 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 cases. And uh, uh, finally, uh, not much is known about well potents of uh, the KDV equation. Uh, if uh, uh, we don't, uh, uh, we are not in uh, standard cases. And uh, uh, perhaps too recently, uh, it was only proven for L2 initial data, but, uh, but uh, by uh, late uh, uh, Jean Bourgogne. Well, and, uh, mm, and uh, yeah, even uh, though uh, questions about what's gonna happen in those cases uh, have been raised over decades, uh, but, uh, but for quite some time, it, uh, it was pretty much virgin land. And, uh, and I'm really happy that very recently, uh, uh, a few, uh, I would say, joint groups of mathematicians started working on different aspects of this question. And, uh, and here I put, uh, put a few uh, recent accomplishments, uh, not in a specific order, perhaps, and uh, uh, regarding well posedness uh, of a KDV equation. Um, so it was recently proven by uh, uh, Roman Killip and uh, Monica Visham. Uh, I think she, she was one of the speakers uh, in the seminar. Um, now that KDV is well posed in uh, uh, H minus one, in the Sobolev space H minus one, and uh, it's the best possible uh, result. You can't do better than this. And uh, for a few decades since uh, the famous uh, uh, paper by uh, uh, Bourgoin, um, a lot of people have been trying to, uh, to improve Bourgoin's original um, uh, uh, results. And uh, uh, for instance, Ter uh, Terentau was uh, involved in this uh, activity. And, uh, uh, but breakthrough um, occurred only um, uh, uh, recently. And, uh, um, and complete integrability was, was crucially used uh, in uh, uh, the Kilip and Visham uh, um, uh, proof. Uh, and also, uh, what uh, I should mention is that uh, quite recently they proved that uh, that uh, Gaussian uh, um, uh, noise in, in, is invariant under KDV uh, uh, equation. So those uh, uh, results may be may be a little bit uh, uh, on mathematical uh, side, but but I view them as uh, a manifestation, what kind of abuse KDV can take and still be you know, well posed. And uh, uh, also quite recently, uh, it's closer to actually my uh, research, uh, uh, robust, so-called robust I, uh, inverse scattering transform uh, was, uh, uh, was introduced by uh, uh, Billman Miller. And uh, it was uh, done in the context of focusing nonlinear Schrodinger equation, but uh, is, uh, but the question which they have to deal uh, with uh, were related to non-zero boundary con uh, conditions at infinity. So in a way, it's much closer to uh, to what I'm interested uh, in, um, and uh, so they were able. This way, they were able to put uh, the famous uh, peregrine, peregrine breather into uh, inverse scattering transform uh, context. And then uh, uh, a few different groups uh, of mathematicians uh, have been involved in so-called in integrable turbulence and, uh, uh, and soliton gas. It's mainly due to uh, Zaharov and uh, 
uh, salaton uh, turbulence and gas were actually uh, experimentally uh, observed uh, by Costa and uh, uh, Osborne. Uh, actually, they wrote a paper. I don't know who did experimenting, uh, but uh, they wrote a peril, uh, 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 paper quite influential, which uh, certainly uh, fueled uh, the interest uh, in this uh, this area. And uh, a few uh, people mm, uh, worked in uh, um, have worked in this uh, in this uh, area, but so far I would say mm, they would, they have been dealing with solid on gas, and, uh, and the situation is not completely randomized. So, so we still uh, expect uh, some more interesting results in this area, and. Uh, uh, and considerations have been primarily physical, so uh, very few rigorous mathematical uh, proofs have been provided so far for, for a number of reasons. For instance, well poseness is not clear if there is well poseness. And uh, also for uh, over 10 years, uh, Gerald Terschel with uh, his numerous team have been involved has been involved in so-called step-like uh, uh, initial uh, conditions. It's uh, when pot uh, potential uh, tends to a constant at minus infinity and zero on the other end, and uh, uh, so kind of step uh, the step function hydraulic uh, jump, if you can uh, call it. And uh, it was first noticed by uh, studied by physicists uh, and then uh, by different uh, mathematicians within a couple of decades. And uh, uh, and it's still ongoing uh, ongoing uh, activity. And uh, they study different uh, different uh, asymptotic uh, regimes. And uh, it, it's it's very, uh, very interesting what uh, KDV does to initial hydraulic uh, 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 jump. Uh, I have a picture uh, later on in my uh, uh, talk, but it is uh, uh, nearly spaced uh, solitons as high as twice as high as the original profile, followed by. Um, uh, uh, Kind of washboard, which is actually made of elliptic function, noidal functions, and uh, mm, uh, also mention almost periodic uh, initial data, the, the Pierce diet uh, ra ra raised that question um, uh, over uh, ten years ago. Um, what's going to uh, 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 happen to almost periodic initial profile under the KDV? Flow, even though uh, it might look, one would expect that there is uh, similarity with just periodic case, and it's indeed uh, the case. But uh, once you start uh, doing anything, then you run into numerous uh, problems. Even short uh, t uh, time existence of KDVs. Uh, 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 solutions was not known till um, about uh, 2018 uh, when um, uh, 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 some affirmative uh, uh, answer was given, some because still under various uh, conditions. And, uh, mm, and uh, the, uh, the engine behind the, uh, those projects is, uh, is uh, 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 Lukic uh, from Rice, and, and he wrote a few papers, uh, different collaborators. And, uh, uh, and last, uh, only um, I'll touch on uh, growing initial conditions. And uh, Dubrovin, it was the last project by the late uh, Dubrovin, and um, he was interested in. Uh, uh, but, uh, initial conditions which are expand, uh, uh, growing as cubic root and uh, mm, one may uh, mm, uh, doubt physical nature of such uh, initial uh, data but uh, such equations pop up when you study dispersion uh, limits of KDV equation 
when you have to do uh, transformations and your original profile turns into uh, something which is not classical. And, um, um, and uh, my main concern in this talk is going to be how much we can relax uh, uh, the decay condition at minus infinity. As a matter of fact, we can drop it altogether. And, uh, and the approach, my approach uh, will be based upon uh, a Henkel uh, operator. A Henkel operator is uh, infinite dimensional generalization of uh, the Henkel uh, matrix, of the Henkel matrix, which is a matrix which enters uh, depend on the sum of the indexes. Uh, and uh, uh, the most straightforward uh, Hilbert space generalization would be integral uh, operator, which uh, kernel depends on the sum, uh, which kernel depends on uh, x and y through uh, their sum. And uh, it is, as a matter of fact, how a Henkel operator appears in inverse scattering uh, transform. You can in the classical Marchenko equation, of course, uh, uh, it is in terms, it's written in terms of a Henkel operator, but integral, which makes uh, quite a bit of difference. Um, as a matter of fact, integral representation of the Henkel operator uh, is least convenient in many uh, respects. So um, the definition I'm going to, to use is stated uh, here. So uh, given a bounded function on, on the real line, um, I define, uh, uh, which is called symbol, I defined uh, the, uh, uh, the operator as follows. Uh, it acts on a hardy space uh, of the upper half plane and uh, uh, then a uh, function multiplied by the symbol and then projected uh, 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 onto the other uh, uh, hard space, the hard space of the lower half plane. And then for convenience, uh, we apply the reflection to get back to, to original uh, hard space on the upper half plane. And uh, it's pretty much uh, how Henkel operator is defined in Hilton uh, operator community, uh, although they like uh, unit circle more than, uh, than half line, uh, but nevertheless, no one likes, seems to like integral representation. And, uh, mm, and as a matter of fact, uh, Henkel and uh, its, its sister, sister operator, Toplitz operator, appear uh, in uh, the Riemann-Hilbert problem, the boundary problem, um, uh, which was introduced at the uh, same time as Han Henkel and Kuplitz operators. And, uh, you know, uh, the relation between the two was established uh, um, uh, long ago. But uh, for some reason, Henkel operators is not, the language of Henkel operators is not what, uh, the language they speak in uh, uh, the integrable um, uh, integrable systems uh, community. For this reason, I'm going to uh, to introduce a few important relevant uh, properties or facts uh, related to uh, to the Henkel operator to show how rich this object is, how interesting the, the object is, and. Uh, uh, the membership of Henkel operator in uh, in uh, the Schatten von Neumann ideals is very is very important, and uh, here I wanna uh, want to uh, highlight uh, the result uh, by Vladimir Peller, uh, who back in 1980s completely characterized uh, uh, all uh, Henkel uh, operators from from SP which extends uh, the, uh, the famous Hartman uh, theorem, uh, old uh, Hartman theorem, which says uh, that Henkel operator is compact uh, if and only if the symbol uh, uh, could be represented as a continuous function plus a, uh, a function, analytic function bounded on the upper half plane. Uh, 
and uh, and I had a lot of uh, conversation with uh, Don Marshall regarding uh, uh, regarding this class, and uh, and uh, then uh, various norm estimates. Uh, the trivial one uh, follows right from the definition, but uh, but it's not. Uh, particularly interesting um, estimate and uh, Harold um, Witham back in the 60s uh, you know, proved the following uh, result uh, uh, for uh, for unimodular uh, unimodular symbol look if uh, symbol is unimodular then uh, you have the estimate that it's greater or equal to one but that estimate is not good enough it's not not for my purposes and what uh, was proven that if uh, phi is from this class, but uh, but it's not invertible in this class, uh, uh, then the norm of the Henkel operator is strictly less than one. Uh, while uh, the symbol has modulus one. And uh, regarding spectral analysis, uh, well, uh, there are few results I've been uh, trying to uh, to use and uh, the main one is related to to the following uh, result. The main part of it was uh, was proven back in the eighties, uh, uh, but uh, final results uh, were proven re relatively recently by Pushnitsky and, and Yafayev. And uh, uh, the main uh, the main uh, uh, part of the result is that. If your symbol is discontinuous with jump, uh, has a jump discontinuity, then uh, that discontinuity gives a rise to uh, to uh, mm, interval of absolutely continuous spectrum. So, and uh, uh, in my uh, context, uh, phi uh, is uh, uh, h is uh, self enjoined, and that's what Pushnitsky and five. Uh, deal with uh, self enjoined uh, uh, Hinkle operators, then uh, then uh, uh, the spectral components uh, of this uh, Hinkle operator would be orthogonal to each other. And uh, there's some beautiful results uh, with some physical uh, interpretations are related, which I have to skip. And uh, uh, the, the last uh, uh, Part would be um, statement I would discuss would be related to inverse spectral uh, analysis, and the main you know, results in this area belong to uh, to Sergei uh, uh, Trail from Brown uh, University, but he was not at Brown University back then, though, and uh, who uh, 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 he dealt with both uh, self-enjoined case and non-self-enjoined case. Here I'm giving you general case. Uh, what he proved uh, with the variety of collaborations is that uh, that any um, any set on complex, uh, given any uh, set on complex uh, plane, pretty much any set, there is a Henkel op uh, operator which uh, 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 which uh, which has uh, uh, spectrum uh, consisting of uh, this compact set and zero. Uh, but the result were, uh, were not constructive and uh, and there is uh, there was a big progress in, in this respect. Uh, Patrick, uh, Patrick Gerard with uh, uh, with collaborators uh, was able to give a constructive uh, 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 procedure for Trail's theorem um, about uh, in about uh, 2012 in, in the connection with so-called cubic Zigio equation uh, they uh, treated a new uh, type of completely integrable um, uh, equation um, where Henkel operator appears in the very beginning so as part of the, uh, the equation and uh, they had no choice but basically to run in your scattering transform is to develop uh, uh, develop spectral analysis 
of Henkel uh, operators. I have not been involved in uh, in uh, in that activity, but just for the background, general background, it perhaps worth uh, uh, mentioning. And uh, um, and now, why uh, why uh, Henkel operators uh, may be relevant to to soliton theory, at least in the KDV context. But I see uh, Henkel operators in the connection with any any other uh, integrable system uh, is uh, is due to the famous Dyson uh, formula, Freeman Dyson, uh, back uh, in 1976, used this formula. I don't think he was the first one to um, to to discover it, uh, uh, not at all. Uh, but uh, for some reason, the name. Uh, his name stuck to uh, this formula, which is called Dyson formula. So the solution to the KDV equation uh, is given by the following explicit formula. And uh, uh, those who dealt with uh, KDV uh, can certainly recognize this pattern, uh, two times the second derivative of log. Uh, so in the function here, which in my case determinant is typically called a Hirota tau function, it's a convenient substitution uh, in, uh, in any case. Uh, it's how uh, Hirota uh, found it or defined it. Uh, but uh, this formula seems to be a good pattern for all uh, KDV solutions. At least I know three independent instances uh, when this formula pops up. Uh, uh, but uh, the proof uh, uh, of this formula could only be mm, done rigorously if uh, initial data is short range, meaning that it decays fast. Uh, uh, so uh, it's integrable with the first uh, 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 moment. And, uh, mm, but if we leave this mm, condition, then mm, uh, all hell uh, breaks loose. Uh, but uh, the Dyson formula is actually our starting point. And uh, its structure uh, is somehow mm, uh, welcomes uh, different limiting procedures my arguments rely upon. So, uh, and here's the uh, initial data I'm going to deal uh, with through the rest of my talk. And uh, mm, uh, uh, so, uh, so Q is real, of course, and um, and let it be a local integral, although it doesn't have to. Um, and two main assumptions. Uh, so, uh, my um, potential is if, um, is essentially semi-bounded from below. Uh, and uh, remember what I mentioned that Salaton is uh, is. Uh, is negative, so uh, uh, so if you take uh, uh, the positive part uh, of um, of this of this function, it means uh, the positive part uh, of the potential minus potential. Uh, and then it, it, uh, the average uh, over an interval has to be a bounded function. So uh, it means that potential. Uh, 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 Q could go to infinity uh, uh, when x goes to minus infinity. It would not ruin this condition at all. It it should not uh, go to minus infinity uh, in a bad way or in any way. So it's uh, the, actually the only condition uh, which I require. And as a matter of fact, this condition could be relaxed, but uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, although uh, I have to impose uh, um, uh, certain decay, short range decay and plus infinity. I can't uh, go beyond far, uh, this case so far. It's actually what I'm working on. Uh, things change drastically um, uh, once you're outside of this assumption. So W here is a weight and we're going to consider uh, a few different types of weights. Uh, and uh, I call uh, such a potential step uh, step type type step uh, step uh, uh, alike. And uh, examples, uh, if you want to visualize. So can I ask a question? Yes, sure. Uh, so can you go back to the first condition? I'm I'm trying to understand it. 
Uh -huh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So your uh, your solitons are negative. Yeah. Uh, by uh, solid, yeah, yeah. Uh, you said Q could not go to minus infinity, but it could go to plus infinity? Yeah, uh, that, uh, uh, well, my, uh, minus Q, uh, minus Q, uh, no, 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 Q could go to, uh, to plus infinity, yeah, Q uh, could go to plus infinity, yep. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then, so what you're doing is you're taking an integral over a unit interval. Mm -hmm. and or then, any interval. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and then you're saying that the integrated result is L infinity. Is, is yeah, that, that's correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, oh, uh, uh, well, uh, if you try to visualize, uh, oh, let, me, uh, let me draw a picture. I actually have that. Uh, so what uh, your potential may uh, look like, it's Q. Something like uh, like this. So it's my uh, uh, Q. So the uh, the negative part is what matters. And so the average uh, the average over unit uh, interval should uh, should remain bounded. Uh, okay. But uh, but Q could be unbound uh, could go to plus infinity. Okay. Uh, and it would not uh, ruin the machinery. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, um, and, and this is also true as x goes to plus infinity. No, uh, no, that would uh, that would not be true. Uh, uh, so in, first condition not true for... in, in general because uh, uh, KDV would be uh, horribly uh, not well posed. Okay, so so the first condition is valid for x less than a certain number. Uh, uh, you know, it could uh, could dive to to, to minus infinity, uh, but it, uh, uh, but, the x, uh, but the x that is in the first condition, uh, that x is not allowed to go to plus infinity. No, no, no. It would be totally fine. Yeah. Oh, okay, uh, ah, uh, you, uh, you, uh, well, you see, for for negative part would be totally fine, but positive part uh, should also go to uh, to zero, as this condition indicates. So, uh, in other words, uh, it means uh, that uh, uh, that uh, the uh, the Schrodinger operator with this such potential is semi bounded from below. That's okay. what it means. So, okay. I uh, and, and as a matter of fact, it's the actual condition. Uh, the Schrodinger operator is semi bounded from below. Otherwise, um, you know, nothing could be guaranteed. Right. Uh, Thank you. Uh, but it has some uh, decay at uh, at plus infinity, and uh, examples would be um, would be um, like crazy stock market, uh, uh, totally arbitrary behavior, uh, uh, white noise, uh, uh, you name it, and uh, uh, but the spectrum of such uh, such showing the operator could be pretty wild. Uh, it has some structure. Uh, the, uh, the negative spectrum is of totally arbitrary nature. It could be absolutely continuous, could be singular, and could be con uh, any nature, you name it. But it's simple. But, uh, uh, but it's always simple. Um, uh, and uh, the, uh, the, the absolutely continuous spectrum feels the positive half line. It's because of the decay at plus infinity, uh, uh, and but uh, the multiplicity could be uh, could be uh, variable. So it could go from uh, from one to two, and if you have uh, if your profile is periodic uh, on the half uh, left half um, uh, line, and then and then it. The, the, the double double multiplicity um, uh, sets of double multiplicity would co coincide with uh, with the zones uh, um, uh, of the periodic potential. And uh, here's um, a good uh, uh, picture. Now let me uh, find a way to uh, um, probably I should, uh, come on. This is a 
good example of such profile. N not totally wild, but nevertheless, it's uh, it's a picture taken. I once, uh, you know, ran an RU uh, on uh, bore waves, and uh, we had a good footage, but it was not digital, so we didn't have a good digital camera. Um, and when it was digitalized, uh, the picture was not particularly good, uh, although it was extremely impressive. Uh, and uh, so I was able to catch, uh, take a decent, um, decent picture when uh, the Boer wave was already in uh, the uh, Turnagain arm. Uh, it's uh, close to Anchorage, Alaska. So uh, that pattern kind of broke down. Uh, it was totally, totally uh, would follow KDV equation. Right now, it looks like maybe a KP equation, but uh, what is interesting feature here is that we have a pretty high uh, solitons uh, logarithmically distributed and uh, followed by uh, nearly uh, perfect uh, periodic uh, uh, periodic wave. And it was recently uh, proven that actually it's, uh, they are periodic and in uh, um, the first approximation, uh, and I think um, uh, Knoidal, uh, the formula is quite complicated, but, uh, but in any case, uh, all regimes of this wave uh, were, um, uh, uh, were mathematically confirmed. So what you see is a good picture of uh, a wave governed by KDV equation. Uh, and, and now uh, the main reason why uh, inverse scattering transform uh, could be developed for such, uh, such profiles is because you can develop uh, one-sided scattering theory. And uh, uh, a little bit uh, of mathematical facts uh, you may or may not be familiar with uh, uh, well, our potential, step like potential, is in the limit point case, so called limit point case at minus infinity. And it means uh, that uh, uh, the Schrodinger equation has uh, so called vial uh, solution, uh, xi minus, uh, which is a square integral function around minus infinity for any, uh, for any. Uh, k squared from the upper half plane. And it's a famous uh, uh, wild solution, uh, which is uh, in the foundation of um, sp spectrum uh, theory for, uh, for Schrodinger uh, or sternly wheel um, operators. And uh, due to the decay at plus infinity, Q is of course in the limit point case uh, at plus infinity, and, but a uh, wild solution can be taken just uh, as the right yaw solution, which uh, represents a plane wave at uh, plus infinity. And, uh, and uh, what we can say uh, uh, because, of these two, uh, because of these two properties uh, for, the by, uh, for the wild solutions, to this Schrodinger equation is uh, that uh, 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 that xi plus and xi plus bar are linearly independent, and and uh, and that's why any solution can be written as the linear combination. It's an undergraduate uh, fact from uh, just ordinary differential equations, and the coefficients uh, are are called uh, reflection, this one is called reflection, and this one is a kind of transmission coefficient, kind of, it's not exactly transmission coefficient, but thing is, I don't have to deal with it. Um, and uh, uh, some uh, e e easy um, uh, uh, facts regarding the reflection coefficient, that it's uh, contractive on uh, the, uh, the real line, same way as uh, reflection coefficient is is modu has modulus less than one uh, for all, uh, almost all uh, k in the classical case, but in my case uh, the re 
collection of coefficients could be unimoduli. As a matter of fact, it's a pretty interesting case of totally repulsive potential. So uh, symmetry, uh, this is uh, normal, uh, normal the property of the reflection coefficient, which provides self-injointness of our Henkel operator. That's why it's important. But uh, what is most important is uh, uh, what I call analytic split. There is a few different ways to split uh, the reflection coefficient uh, into uh, uh, analytic function and plus something. Um, and uh, I know more than two ways, and they all play uh, important roles answering different questions. Uh, but uh, 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 the most important, I would say, is that uh, reflection coefficient could be split um, into reflection coefficient, which corresponds to uh, uh, to the part of the potential or initial data supported on zero infinity. Or as a matter of fact, uh, on any uh, in interval, uh, say B infinity. So, uh, and, uh, and this reflection coefficient would not depend on what's going on uh, uh, with the potential at minus infinity. That part uh, uh, is handled by uh, this function, uh, which happens to be, even though on the boundary it may be really ugly, on the real line may be really ugly, but it, it needs analytic animation into the upper half plane. And uh, uh, and here's I also give yet another analytic split that's different from this one. Um, uh, in terms of um, so-called um, uh, vial, teach much vial M function, just M function, it's yet another important object uh, of uh, spectral theory for ordinary um, differential equations. And and the uh, vial function is uh, so-called Herlotz function, uh, so it maps upper half plane onto upper half plane, and uh, and uh, this particular formula is of little importance to my my talk. It just uh, only to demonstrate that uh, that it has a specific structure made of uh, well-known uh, objects. And uh, the, uh, the analytic part is analytic in the upper half plane, except for uh, the interval or set of bounded set on the imaginary part. Uh, uh, um, and uh, uh, A here uh, is related to the lower bound uh, for the spectrum of the Schoenger operator by the following simple formula, just square root of the uh, lower bound, uh, plus a unimodular uh, uh, function, which happens to be continuous because of the decay at infinity. So psi plus is just a regular Yost uh, solution, uh, which, uh, is, uh, which properties are really well known. Um, and, uh, um, and then, the split actually allows me to introduce uh, scattering data. And uh, uh, so uh, the first piece of scattering data would be a reflection coefficient. But uh, this, uh, the second piece, uh, uh, which is typically uh, so-called norming uh, constants, now it's no longer a const uh, norming, a set of norming constants, but a measure uh, um, made of, uh, made of mm, uh, while functions and also used, used uh, solution. This is a positive uh, finite uh, com uh, uh, compactly supported uh, measure, which in classical case of fast decay can be written down explicit in terms of uh, used, used uh, solutions. So this quantity is what they call norming constant. Uh, and of course, the spectrum, negative spectrum in this case is just finite made of uh, so-called bound states. And a uh, uh, more realistic example, as far as I'm concerned, is hydraulic uh, jump, pure hydraulic jump. And uh, the uh, scattering problem can be solved explicitly. So, and uh, the measure, uh, uh, smearing measure, 
is um, absolutely continuous, and the reflection coefficient also is explicit. And uh, uh, here is the, the scattering data uh, uh, for step two uh, in the inverse scattering transform, time evolution of the scattering data. It has a simple time evolution. I do not actually have a direct uh, proof of it, but it comes as a byproduct uh, of uh, the proof. So same type of uh, simple evolution. And now I'm going to form a Henkel operator uh, with the following uh, symbol. So um, the symbol is uh, the sum of two pieces. This piece uh, is made of reflection coefficient where Xi is, uh, mm, is a regular uh, signature feature of the KDV equation. And, uh, and plus uh, this uh, analytic function, which uh, is responsible the, for the negative spectrum mm, through uh, the, uh, the measure rho. And, uh, mm, and uh, we define the Henkel operator with such uh, index and has uh, some obvious properties and, and some not so obvious properties. For instance, it's self joint. It's a good thing. And secondly, it's of trace class. And one plus Henkel operator is actually a non-singular matrix. So it is, uh, you know, since H is uh, uh, trace class, uh, then, uh, then you can think of one plus H as a matrix. And as a matrix, it's non-singular. And those two statements are um, uh, uh, pretty hard to, to prove. And, uh, and here's uh, the first uh, result um, I would like to, uh, uh, to discuss. It will appear in Proceedings of London, London Mathematical Community in August. Uh, and uh, we treat uh, this decay. So W, the weight function is x to the five over two. It could actually be improved depending on what you want, uh, but not much so perhaps for what I want. Uh, if the decay um, at plus infinity uh, uh, is as follows, it means uh, that Q is summable with this uh, uh, moment at plus infinity, uh, but pretty much arbitrary otherwise, uh, um, and then, uh, if we consider the uh, Cauchy problem for the KDV equation with the truncated da data at an arbitrary point B, so it means that Q, uh, Q sub B is uh, short range uh, data for which inverse scattering transform is well developed, uh, and then uh, find uh, uh, this KDV solution uh, for each such truncated piece of data, uh, uh, then for any x and positive t, uh, uh, the sequence of such solutions uh, would go uniformly on compacts uh, to a classical solution to the KDV equation with Q as the data. Um, and, uh, and the solution is given by uh, this formula where everything is well defined. Uh, so this determinant is, is defined in the classical uh, Fredholm sense because H is, uh, is uh, uh, trace class. And moreover, uh, it's also five times uh, uh, differentiable, continuously differentiable in the trace norm with respect to X and at least once uh, in time. And now I'm going to go briefly, uh, I'm running out of time, uh, uh, the, main, uh, uh, the main points of the, uh, of the proof. So as I said, I start out with truncated uh, data, which is short range, and, uh, and we have the, uh, the Dyson formula available for it and uh, can write uh, uh, down the solution in this form. And uh, uh, then we split our uh, symbol as follows. Remember um, one of those analytic splits into um, uh, analytic function, 
plus uh, uh, plus a function which doesn't actually depend on b. It's uh, totally determined by the behavior of the potential at plus infinity. And then we show uh, uh, that uh, the sequence um, uh, or family of Henkel operators with this symbol converges in uh, trace norm to, uh, uh, to the Henkel operator, uh, which symbol is, uh, is what uh, is the same G as I discussed before. I didn't write the formula, explicit formula. It's, uh, we can do without it, uh, but it uh, uh, tends to, uh, uh, to what we need. And with all the derivatives, uh, uh, so it means we have a very, um, a very uh, smooth structure. And uh, convergence uh, is provided by uh, uniform convergence of M functions, which is a very important uh, subtle fact from uh, the theory of Weil, uh, um, uh, so-called weil Kishmash theory. And the next uh, mm, important step is analysis of the Henkel operator with this symbol. Uh, it's uh, again uh, differentiable in uh, uh, trace class. Uh, it doesn't depend on B, so there is no need to take a, a limiting procedure here. Uh, uh, but analysis of this Hinkel operator is, is pretty complicated, pretty involved. And, uh, uh, but the outcome is uh, that it's five times uh, continuously differentiable in trace norm, norm with respect to X and once uh, in T. And it's due to a combination of a few uh, facts. First of all, Peller's characterization of all trace class operators, and where uh, the norm, the expression of the norm uh, of this operator in terms of potential, um, uh, or uh, in terms of phi, appears. Uh, and then uh, so-called uh, pseudo-analytic continuation uh, techniques uh, which were developed back in the 70s, um, actually in, in, in uh, Russia by uh, by Dinkin, late Dinkin, and uh, and also uh, it would require a, a settle point uh, approximation, uh, where um, um, uh, settle points or stationary points coincide with uh, with poles, and. Uh, mm, and the last but not least, uh, non-singularity of this uh, matrix, and the proof is uh, relies on Widom's theorem, which I introduced uh, as one of the properties of Hinkle um, uh, operators. And uh, mm, and uh, just just a, just a few remarks. Uh, 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 well, um, in short range context, when uh, Q decays uh, at minus infinity fast enough, uh, uh, but decays at plus infinity with this, uh, with this weight function. Um, uh, similar results were proven uh, by uh, uh, Cohen uh, Kappeler uh, back in 1987, and they uh, uh, relied on classical inverse scattering transform, and it was a very, very uh, uh, long and technical proof. Uh, our proof is perhaps just a fraction of of the original proof. Uh, and uh, it uh, yields better result because we use some uh, uh, some facts from theory of Hinkle operators that they didn't have access to. And, um, and also uh, theorem four uh, shows again, very uh, uh, um, un, um, uh, un, uh, uh, directional, uh, uh, very non unidirectional very unidirectional uh, structure of KDV equations. So basically, it, it means we, we don't really care about imposing boundary condition at minus infinity, no matter what. And uh, mm, and uh, just uh, the last thing uh, I have. To, uh, perhaps time, I don't know, I'm kind of running out uh, over time slightly, is to refinement, uh, which I found uh, long ago, but uh, but I didn't know how to deal with minus infinity uh, uh, fully back then, but uh, could deal with plus infinity. Is that if you um, uh, assume uh, kind of uh, exponential decay, 
whatever you call it, super sub exponential decay at plus infinity, then if delta here is between zero and one, then the solution is actually neuromorphic uh, on the whole complex plane with respect to X. And, but it, it has infinitely many poles, it must have infinitely many uh, poles. And if we drop the decay, uh, in this, if delta is one, uh, then uh, function the solution remains mirromorphic in, in a strip around uh, the real line, which is widening proportion to the radical uh, of time and with infinitely many poles uh, in that strip. And if delta is greater than one, uh, then becomes uh, Gevre smooth. And, uh, uh, and this result, uh, uh, the best uh, known result uh, is, uh, is due to uh, 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 Tarama, uh, which uh, assumes uh, just only one type of decay and uh, you know, which is stronger than what I can handle. And his techniques are based upon the inverse scattering transform, uh, quite uh, involved. Um, and uh, a few uh, and a few uh, uh, corollaries. Uh, uh, I don't think uh, this result can be achieved by uh, uh, by regular PD techniques, and it shows a very a strong uh, dispersive uh, smoothing, which is of course uh, a well known um, fact uh, in the community. Um, and the uh, thing which I um, uh, don't know, but would uh, of course like to know is uh, how uh, poles, uh, double poles uh, of the solution evolve in time and how to actually, what kind of tools to use to to study them. It is something I have uh, had in the back of my mind for quite some time, but uh, but a few people, a few communities, different communities uh, uh, also got some results in this direction. But uh, unfortunately, I don't have any contribution to that area. But I do have contribution uh, to different questions related to unique uh, continuation. Uh, for instance, one of the results um, uh, uh, is that that KDV solution cannot uh, have compact support more than twice, and uh, uh, it follows from uh, from the fact that Chu is analytic, mirror-morphic, and of course mirror-morphic function cannot uh, banish on a thick uh, set. Uh, 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 but before it was quite a bit of an effort to prove things like that. And uh, well, in a couple pictures, I think uh, the talk is over and this is kind of extra dessert. <laughs> Some pictures which I took during one of my RUs, uh, we went to Child's Glacier and uh, to observe uh, tsunami waste, which we are actually dealing with. And it's this wall of ice is pretty tall. This is a, just a regular, a regular trees, a regular size, and this is a pretty bro uh, wide river. So I would estimate a few hundred meters. And, uh, and it's a flow, uh, so making a noise like a battleground uh, heard uh, in miles, and chunks of ice uh, drop. Uh, they call it carving, uh, carving, and uh, those uh, drops uh, produce splashes, huge splashes, uh, which create um, almost perfect tsunami waves. And uh, some of that uh, extremely tall, but um, I think it's uh, the tallest one you're able to uh, to. Uh, to catch, uh, spending a few hours uh, there. And uh, thank you for your attention. It's unrelated to KDV equation though. It's our trademark. Right, uh, thank you for your attention. And sorry for taking uh, some extra time. Like I said, I don't know 
uh, how fast or slow. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I would go. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've got a question about uh, your, your meromorphic uh, statement mm -hmm. that, that required exponential decay at infinity. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, um, uh, less uh, than, uh, than exponential decay. Uh, let me uh, hold on a second. Where is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, less. So a uh, delta here is between zero uh, is between zero and one. So it could be uh, super exponential if you wish, but uh, it could be as small as like one half. But if you just have algebraic decay, then you don't know. Uh, if I have uh, no, well, but uh, but I know uh, I I know uh, how to handle it. We just didn't get to that uh, that uh, project. As a matter of fact, uh, this statement is uh, mm, it could be it could be in, improved here. I'm concerned about only classical solutions. Means uh, that uh, uh, that h here is continuously differentiable in the trace norm five times, uh, two times from mm -hmm. this derivative, and three times because you plug it in. Uh, the KDV equation, but uh, but if you impose here uh, a faster, uh, a slower decay, then uh, uh, then this object is going to be well defined. Uh, 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 but uh, uh, we don't know in what sense it would solve the KDV equation. It would self, uh, solve in some sense, of course, due to, um, for instance, uh, Bourbon uh, uh, theorem. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, which assumes uh, much slower decay, uh, but would not be a classical in the classical sense. Right. Uh, uh, so here uh, I'm concerned about, in, you know, the perhaps uh, slowest uh, uh, possible decay, which produces nice properties of the KDV equation. Uh, but I believe, if I remember uh, correctly, it could be just X. And then uh, this it would be still trace class, but I don't know if the derivative of h would be trace class. But you don't really have to take uh, the derivative of h as long as uh, this object is defined in perhaps distributional sense. That mm -hmm. would be to, uh, that would be total fine. And if you here take um, say um, uh, power decay scale, then uh, uh, then of course could be um, uh, 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 faster decay would produce better properties of this function. And, uh, and we have actually exact language how to, to, to express it, but I didn't put it in, uh, in the slides uh, though. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? So while we're waiting for other people to unmute themselves, I'll ask another question. Um, so you, um, and maybe the answer, uh, uh, maybe the answer to my question is simply the unit directionality that you pointed to, but um, what you've, um, so in the term that you stated, you, you kind of, uh, you introduce this parameter B and then to the left of B, you set everything to zero, then you let B go to infinity. Yeah, uh, B going minus, minus it. Yeah, right. yeah, correct. Um, correct. So once you see that process in action and you see it work, it's mm -hmm. tempting to say, oh, let's deal with plus infinity the same way. Say it again? To it's tempting to say, let's deal with plus infinity the same way. Let's just get. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, plus infinity, right? Right. Uh, and yeah, so, uh, yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. There are. It's of course something I've been working on for quite some right. time, uh, and uh, kind of uh, for the time being abandoned uh, that idea. Uh, you know, the uh, Hengel operator, which appears. Uh, 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 so the setup is pretty much the same, mm -hmm. and uh, but uh, the uh, the property of the Hengel operators involved um, are not uh, are not understood. 
So I'm still trying to, 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 to understand it. Thing is that um, it would pretty much uh, uh, be equivalent to the question, what if I deal with not right scattering data, but left scattering data? You see, uh, we can, you can forget about this piece for the time being. Assume that your potential is zero uh, on the left-hand side and uh, worrying about uh, relaxation of decay on at plus infinity. Right. This formula would uh, let you, you know, combine both things uh, quite easily. But uh, uh, then to deal uh, with uh, that truncation you, you mentioned uh, when B goes to infinity, uh, you ended up you end up having a, uh, or considering uh, a left uh, re uh, left reflection coefficient and uh, a left scattering data, and that data in that data, that exponential cubic exponential the main feature of the KDV equation would be with different sign, and that sign uh, uh, changes the properties of the underlying Hinkle uh, operator big time. So that is actually a consequence of the unidirectionality then, that one direction works well and the other one does not. Yes, uh, yes, and I can even state it in terms of Henkel operator. Um, uh, that cubic exponential, let me go back to that uh, exponential. Yeah, here we go, this exponential. Mm -hmm. So if you, uh, if you change the sign here, the properties of this exponential, uh, uh, as far as the Henkel operator is concerned, profoundly different. So summarily, <laughs> If you include, uh, if you looked at the KDV equation with an extra linear C times UX term, mm -hmm. uh, depending on whether the C is positive or negative, yeah. that would hugely affect your results. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, this side, the sign, uh, this side uh, in front of eight uh, affects uh, the result. And by the way, there, uh, there have been a few interesting results, uh, and uh, uh, Don Marshall actually uh, um, draw my attention to uh, those results, uh, all the results by Saracen. Mm -hmm. um, it's related to what so-called uh, so um, uh, devices in uh, H infinity, C plus A infinity uh, class. Uh, it's somewhere um, in my, ah, it's far, far away. Ah, I, I, actually, I, I can write it here. So that class C plus H infinity, so called uh, Saracen algebra. It is actually algebra. And, um, and Xi belongs to this, but Xi inverse doesn't. Uh -huh. Not, uh, not, uh, 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 um, so, um, as, a, uh, as a matter of fact, um, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, so this is no longer correct, but we multiply psi by R, you see? And if R goes to zero, so if we assume uh, that our scattering data is such that R goes uh, to zero when k goes to infinity, then r multiplied by this is from Saracen class. Uh, that is a very subtle result by, um, uh, by um, uh, Saracen. I think with one of his graduate students back in uh, the 80s. And uh, uh, so I know quite a bit what's going to happen uh, uh, with uh, when B goes to infinity uh, to plus infinity, then but uh, it's much more subtle. I mean, unidirectional directional uh, nature isn't built in this statement. Right. So in terms of Hinkle operator, that's what the problem is. Okay. Thank you. It's exactly the problem. And uh, but uh, like I said, if you multiply by R, and you have to then it uh, could make this happen, which I, uh, which I totally need. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions? Maybe uh, last, uh, nice uh, last uh, just a little bit, uh, one more uh, comment 
regarding what you were asking. So when you assume slower decay at past infinity, then a positive embedded bound states could occur. And those ones are really fascinating things. Mm -hmm. You know, their bound states uh, of the Stringer are operated, but not negative, which are responsible for, uh, for solid ones, but positive. And it has been a long-standing problem, what's going to, to, to happen. Uh, and uh, we got a good grasp of the situation. And I hopefully it will be in my next talk. Great. All right. Well, let's thank our speaker again. No, thank you.